<laughs> he, ar- he got arrested for that. What's his uh, What's his name? I know Courtney uh, Love's not a big fan of him. Wes something. Because he he sounded a little too much like Kurt, especially in the beginning. Huh. And what do they get him for? Being an asshole. Well, yeah, he went on the carousel, and then it goes in back into that restricted area. <laughs> oh, he went, oh, he went all he, in. He rode the whole thing around. Oh, my God. And that then, is, and then that they is had, going for it. So <laughs> he set off a bunch of alarms, <laughs> and then they had to just drag him off the carousel. <laughs> that, okay. The you get, puddle of mud guy. I, I, I don't know. West Scanlon. No, me neither. All right, good. All right, Artie. Who would? <laughs> I thought he just went for the easy loop, but he went. Wow, he went. He went behind the scenes. Wow. Was he uh, partaking in substances or something? Uh, the, the article didn't say that, but yeah. they just list a lot of the things that he was arrested for in the past. You have to make your own assumptions. If you ride the luggage carousel at the airport, you're not at, at sober. the age of forty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and go exactly. behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> can't be sober. Restricted area. <laughs> Look, it's fine out here, but right. don't go in that restricted area. He went under the... Yeah, that's... The flop, the flop, the flop, the flop thing. thing. I don't even know what you call that. The flop. Yeah. Artie Lang in studio again. A lot of people uh, are thinking that Artie's on our show for the first time. No, he's already <laughs> did our show. He killed it yeah. about a month or two ago. Is this... Am I, are we on the air? Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I'm, I'm trying to like... Yes. You, you need to adjust the, the volume over there? Okay. Uh, there you go. Now, there's, there's the stuff I need. I think you lost a little weight. Is that? I probably it, dropped a couple. Is yeah. that okay to say to another guy? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. It's okay to say to this guy. Yeah. You're looking good. I'm fine with it. Thanks, man. All I right. Know, it's just... What are you doing to lose the weight? Uh, you know, I, I, I got diabetes, and uh, I had type 2 for a while. That turned into type 1. Which is uh, worse. Because one, one. Because that's when you need the needle. They actually have these pen needles now yeah. where it's the easiest thing in the world. Like a retarded kid could use it. You, you, you just stick yourself. You put the amount of units you want uh, on the dial on the pen, and you, you put it in. It takes like 10 seconds. Do you get a hit of pain or no? No. No, that's what makes it easier. Just a quick skim pop. If I had to do that, I don't think I could ever... You know, I mean, that, I mean, there's, I can't believe these heroin addicts on the street can hit veins. You know, you go, you go uh, in, into a hospital and like 14 nurses sometimes can't find the vein. Right. These guys tie off on the corner of 38th and 9th <laughs> yeah, right. and uh, they hit a vein, you know, I mean, they could be doctors or something. Uh and what, you have to eat this diabetic diet, which is basically a diet everyone should eat. It's no carbs. It's no white flour, stuff like that. And uh, because I've been eating a diabetic diet, I probably dropped some weight. And I started walking a little bit. You know? So does the needle hurt every day? No. They, they used to, like, though, It's a real small needle. My old man had it. My old man had it. And he was in real good shape, my father. And he, he climbed roofs for a living. Uh, so he always, uh, you know, but he, he had a bad, just hereditary, I guess. But that was back when you had to draw it out of the vial like a syringe Holy and fuck. that hurt it of was, course yeah. uh, but I didn't get it till a couple of years ago and the technology is such now where it and when I you know we're on the road so much that's what I worried about in yeah. the hospital because I forget to take fucking shirts on the road yeah. you, know? <laughs> uh, you know how many shirts I, I have like a, you know a Hawthorne Inn or Ramada Inn t-shirt I buy in the gift shop because I'm out of clothes uh, but it's just like taking another pen uh, in your in your briefcase on the road so that's probably why I dropped it does, does your uh, blood uh, sugar drop uh, get, well, get you in some situations. Yeah, it. Uh, I like. I mean, my problem is it being higher, so I like when it drops. But uh, oh, okay. I uh, if I exercise, it's still reversible, which is great. So if I can lose another fifty pounds, oh, so you could go back to having the the, the one. Well, just on pills. Two, two, yeah, just on pills. Yeah, right. Okay. Which is. Much but how do you go from? Uh, wait, now I'm confused. Which is the worst one? One is one. Okay, so how do you go? They from, call it type A or type one. How do you go from two to one? Uh, Just bad diet? Yeah, that's what I, you know what I did? I thought it was going to be way worse when I went in originally. And of course, they tell me it's not as bad. And I take that as a, you know, okay, now I can still keep having fun. Fuck it. I'm not as bad as I thought I was. And, you know, on the road, I, I, like, what do you eat for dinner on the road at a hotel? I, Always I, I, grilled chicken <laughs> uh, with steamed vegetables. I have, well, Kenny will find a place because Kenny eats pretty healthy too. He doesn't yeah. like, really eat a burger, but he eats ridiculously. See, you got to go out and get grilled you gotta chicken. You got to find it. Yeah. But you the problem is, is you, you have all the intention of uh, eating well, and then you open up that menu in your hotel room, right. and it's just staring at you. Well, God forbid you're at a nicer hotel and they have everything. Like, I just uh, I played Boston tonight recently, and I said, let me splurge a little bit, and I stayed at the Ritz Carlton. 
a, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can get a steak and yeah. <laughs> pretty full menu. Yeah, yeah it's hard. Yeah. But you get, you know, you get just, just salad with you know, dressing on the side, grilled chicken. You get used to it after a while. Like, yeah. I'd what rather eat shit, but I feel better when I eat that. What about the mini bar? <laughs> well, that's, I, that's my problem. I rush out to have a $19 Toblerone bar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> with, with, a, fucking rule. with a root beer. <laughs> that's my dinner. And that's why I'm on stage like that. You know, my blood sugar is 600. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, but that's the other thing. It's expensive. At the, yeah, that's uh, it. the mini bar is you open the door, you're down 50 bucks. Right. It's, it's crazy. And now you can't even move those things around because, uh, you know, no, sensors. I, that's right. They have all sorts of sensors. What a fucking scam. If you right. move a Heineken to get to, to what Arnold Behind the item. Right, yeah. You exactly. pay for both items. And you don't know you're paying. No. Because no one really looks at their bill. Famous, famous cookies right. and all that shit. Yeah, I always feel like a cheap bastard or a, or a woman if I'm looking at the bill. I, you know, I, I, what is this item here? Yeah. Uh, you know, and then if you have a couple of pornos in there, it's you double the fucking room and tax. You bring your laptop. That's what you do. You jerk off with your laptop. Yeah. And you bring, you get everything with a refrigerator so you can buy some. I'll bring like fucking awful baby I, carrots. They're not great. That's right. right. No, no, they fill you up. And the phone, and look, and there's no reason anyone should have a high phone bill in a hotel anymore. Never. Yeah. You know. Uh, te but technology is such where it should be easier. Do you try to squeeze your drinks and snacks into the, their refrigerator, but they don't have any extra room? Has That's anyone ever tried that? But I, I'm putting my tuna like, salad in that I got at the Exxon <laughs> station on the way up and to save money, but you accidentally hit uh, <laughs> right. an apple juice, and that's 14 bucks. Yeah. It's really a scam. It really is. Did you try the freeze dry? This is, I, get, I think we're going to hack, but I kind of like this conversation. Yeah. I, I, we would stay at a dog hotel. I'm mentioning it again. Right. But they had. Uh, freeze dried ice cream. Have you ever tried that? No. What is? I that? want to freeze dried ice. It's cream. in the mini bar and it's not in the oh, refrigerator. Okay. I don't know. That seems like Dippin' Dots at Yankee Stadium. They sort of like, said it's kind of <laughs> like what that. What the fuck they even are? It's weird, but I, I like them. I like Dippin' Dots. I do. So maybe I like the frozen dried ice cream. All right. Uh, we were supposed to try it. Sam. Eventually, if if you travel a lot, eventually you can't help but talk about hotels and traveling. It's just what it's one of the things you're stuck in them every weekend. And I've I've, I've said before too, like I can't stay in like I like a good Rich Carlton, like everybody, but they fucking put so much starch in the sheets. Yeah, I like a good fucking Courtyard Marriott. <laughs> I sleep like they're, a baby they're in those nice, fucking things. Actually, now Courtyard Marriott, there's, there's low level thing. I mean, Courtyard Marriott's one of those examples of an affordable, nice place to to stay. Yeah, yeah. they get the little fucking snack area outside. Yeah. You got your little refrigerator. Your little storage, so Kenny will go to Whole Foods. They're not overthinking it. Yeah, get right. some fucking, you know, some boring food. You know, you know, shitty the, fucking regular almonds are unsalted, normal. <laughs> they, they blow. You got to dial stuff up. You they know. blow. Did you use uh, your yoga mat up there in Boston? Are you we're, a yoga guy? No, no. We're, uh, he doesn't even know. We were in this dog hotel, and they have they had a sign that said every room comes with a yoga mat. <laughs> yes. They're just they're just trying way too hard for something that is not going to work. No, yeah. I did not. How many people are using? In their yoga mats in their hotel. You'd be room. surprised. People would get way into working out, man. Uh, the, when I w I did the road with uh, DePaulo a couple of times, and he was doing that P ninety X, yeah. and he got in really good shape. But he took that tape, that DVD with him everywhere, yeah. everywhere, and he's like jumping around in a room. And uh, you know, God bless him, it worked. But I couldn't believe the level of commitment. Again, I can't. Uh, I don't like. I like to underpack. You know, yeah. it's amazing how we like we, we, we commit to like bad things, like the amount of commitment you would have to get. Getting high, and it's the same for myself for bad shit. It's like committing to good stuff is hard. Committing oh, to bad shit is delightful and easy. Going to score drugs is a, like another job. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, literally another job. Yeah, you know, and the stress level is insane. So, what about what? What actually made you say fuck it? I want to. I want to do something about this. Like as far as like the eating and stuff. Uh, well, the diabetes was a that, big that wake up call. But that's that's my mo, man. It's something serious has to happen. It has to take a doctor like showing me you some know, charts. My, my, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Showing me my blood work right. and going, listen, you want to die? And if you, I mean, because I just turned forty-seven, and you, literally, like, you, you won't see fifty. And then, <laughs> then I started to think, do I want to see fifty? <laughs> God, I mean, on. I'm childless, you know. I, I, but uh, we need you around. You want to see? <laughs> you want to see fifty? No, well, you know what? I didn't think, you know, with my. Uh, my attitude, the way it's been, my negative attitude over the years, I didn't think I'd be that scared of death. But I, uh, this is a good thing. I was scared crazy of it. I was like, wow, you know, he really, because this guy laid it on the line. He's like, you know, he had good bedside manner, but he said, listen, I'll be honest with you, you got to change, you know. So, um, 
Where it's not just in theory anymore. It's like you're actually at that age where it's like he's not right. saying like you, you got to do this by seventy. Right. Yeah. No, 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 now you got to do this. You're so you're, facing it. You're at yeah. the crossroads. <laughs> Absolutely. We all are though, yeah. and we finally got to start really paying attention to that shit. Yeah. When you get even people who live the healthiest lifestyle, uh, you know they they. they they get taken out by something. Something stupid. You know, exactly. exactly. It's scary to think it's preventable. Or, like, if you're going to drop dead, you're going to drop dead, but you don't want to do it because of a fucking uh, a bonbon or a burger. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that Taylor Negron guy. I, I just worked uh, with him. I did a podcast with him. And uh, he about six months ago, he looked insanely healthy, and he was telling me about this, you know, lifestyle he leads and vegan forever, all that stuff. And you know, a, a, three months, bam, you got. Was it that fast? I, that that wow. I'm, I might have wrong information, but close that. to it. Yeah, I mean, if it was like pancreatic or something like that, you go. That's what, yeah. but that's the way to do. It. I want to linger. Right. <laughs> you know, with the uh, cancer for like you know eighty five years, I'd rather just you know buy. I'll check out now. I didn't know Taylor, but he just died. I think it was was it, it was a pancreas kid. That's the motherfucker. Man. I met him. I don't, and again, I'm not sure what it was. I, these are all rumors you hear from comedians, so I don't have an official story. But uh, I met him the one time. Really nice guy. Right. Yeah, but but yeah. He, I guess he found out. And then I wonder if he didn't get checkups. Or you know, it's like we're at that age too, where it's, you hate to keep talking about, it, but it's like I got to go get checkups, and yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah. He's, no. I'm he's a, the uh, comic, by the way, for the people that that yeah, don't yeah. know. Yeah. He was Easy money. He was the boyfriend trying to get right. Rodney's and daughter. A great actor. Fast Times Ridge Runner. Fast I, Times. He's uh, great in. Yeah. 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 Funny guy. Man, that sucks. Fifty seven. That uh, sounded so old when I was fucking starting comedy when I was 21 uh, and all yeah. eager and all high energy. Like that's how old Henny Youngman was. You know what I mean? You felt like when we started, boy, yeah, 57 or Freddie Roman or these guys, you're going, wow, they're old. Now we're those guys. Yeah, it, it's, within re <laughs> it's within reach. Down at the cellar, at the comedy cellar, there's all these young kids and they, they talk about, you know, Instead of the Rolling Stones, they talk about DMX. You know, yeah. it's, mm. uh, it's crazy. <laughs> well, comedians start telling you they watched you for a long time, like, right? Because that, you know, Tough Crowd was so many years ago. And I grow had, up listening to you. Oh that's my what god, I get. dude, that's yeah. so fucking weird. Right. <laughs> but dude, I, I loved you. I watched you. Michael Chase said that recently. Like I used to watch Jim. I'm like, fuck, I feel so old. Yeah. It was a nice compliment, yeah. but you feel like, god damn it. I'm Chase kidding. a real nice I, kid. He's very respectful. Some of them are a little arrogant about it, but they go, I grew up. I, I grew up listening to you. I I I, I, I got that in Boston. Yeah. Yeah. When we were up I'm there, sure. for, yeah, yeah. Well, you guys started there, right? We, we haven't, we haven't uh, done radio in Boston. Well, we did go back a little bit. But you but made we got your fired. First, your first impact was, was in twenty years ago. Right. right around now is when we went to Boston. I can't even imagine that. And, and at Jimmy's show, he taped his special. Uh, a lot of people coming up. Man, I started listening to you at thirteen, and now this guy, it guy, and full grown man yeah. with a beard uh, halfway down <laughs> his fucking chest, and he had to tell me he started listening when he was thirteen years old. Another one is how about a hot chick saying her dad is a fan? Yeah. Uh, Get That'll it. get my dick hard, <laughs> <laughs> especially if she says it while we're alone. My Absolute. dad's a big fan. No, that, that, that you know what, and uh, it, you know what, I, I'm glad you said that because I thought I was weird. Yeah. That really turns me on. Yeah, hot chick goes, my dad. You know. <laughs> well, let's let's ruin your dad's day. Yeah, let's really <laughs> let's destroy two things for him at once. <laughs> Guess who I'm dating? Right. <laughs> there, there was two generations at your show. It was a mom and dad that brought their son, yeah. who likes really likes the radio show and your comedy at the same time. So I go to the dad. I'm like, did you? You know, you used to listen. He goes, "Oh yeah, a long time. I I used to listen to you on AF when I was a kid." Right. And I'm I'm like, "What? What? What?" Because <laughs> his kid is 16 years old at Jimmy's show. Time flies by. I mean, listen, it's it, we're you know, uh, 15 years into the new century for Christ's sake. Remember that when you were younger, you started thinking, "How old am I going to be?" Yeah, and, uh, 2000. Yep. And, you know, now that's gone. That's, that's, right. a, that's a fucking haze memory ago. We went through that exercise. We were on our way to my grandma's house in Waiting River. And we'll all like, yeah. well, went around the car. I'm big family, all going, How old are you going to be right, at right. 2000? <laughs> I did the same exact thing. And my dad said he was going to be uh, 70. Mm -hmm. I remember this like it was yesterday. He goes, I'm going to be 70. We're all like looking at him like, What the? F <laughs> 70? Holy shit. That's now 15 years ago. Yeah. If he was alive, he'd be 85. I was going to say, Is he not all right? Did he make 70? for the, He made 74. Oh, he does. He, he, he was taken out century. in a car accident. He said, Oh, really? Yeah, oh. but his heart was going. So. Yeah. We we all were convinced he had maybe a year or two left. He was he was going down. Hey, listen, man, so he went out rock and roll style. He 
went out like a rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. On the way to the hospital, gave all his info like it was nothing. And really, then he was on blood thinners for for his heart, and uh, uh, yeah, his his brain just couldn't handle the yeah. expansion of the blood. You don't want to. Yeah, yeah, my mother always told me there was my mother's words ring in my head when I'm younger, like and I'm living like shit, unhealthy. She's like, you don't want bad news from a doctor one day. You don't want bad. You know, <laughs> of course that's yeah, coming with the diabetes chart and hundred <laughs> percent right. right. You know, yeah, it's like this is what people are afraid of when they go. You never, you never want the solemn. You never want the glasses coming off before they talk. Oh. Like the solemn discussion. No, Artie, sit down. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna lie. You never want to hear. I'm not gonna lie to you right. before the doctor gives his fucking prog. No, lie to me, you fucking yeah, cunt. Please. <laughs> yeah, give me. A, Do whatever you have to. Everybody else in my life bullshits me. Why not my doctor? All right, let me skip out of this office thinking everything's all right. Let my stand-up agent tell me the news. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, babe, you're gonna be fine. Everything's right, great. Right. Diabetes, nothing. And I didn't know. I mean, I. I I mean, it's funny. I know you for so long, and I didn't. I, I didn't know that your dad was. I know your dad. You, you said he fell off a roof. Yeah, but, but I didn't know he was a quadriplegic. Well, that's that's how he became a quadriplegic. I never yeah, knew that. He fell off a roof. Uh, he installed antennas for a living. My father and uh, did roofing and clean gutters, whatever. Like uh, jack of all trades kind of guy. Got to like about the ninth grade in school. He's a very physical guy. That's why it was like a living hell for him. He uh, not a big reader uh, unless it was the sports section. And he fell off a roof a week after my eighteenth birthday. Fuck. And he, uh, what was he doing? when he fell off was he was he, he was he was uh, working he was trying to install a, a wire uh, for an antenna he just put up and um, he put the ladder he was working on on top of a picnic table and he was on the to, to get to the top uh, peak which he did a lot he was just a maniac he thought he could fly I think and yeah. he, uh, he, he lunged forward to hammer something and he fell 40 feet right on his head 40 feet on the head he landed yeah right and became a quadriplegic for the last four and a half years of his wow. life yeah, yeah that's, that, that's brutal see your dad going through that that's rough fucking horrendous yeah he only made five years after that well I think he offed himself he had a couple of crazy fa he would ask me to kill him once a week oh so, really uh, yeah. yeah because he would just he, he didn't know I got that listen I, I you're suffering if I, if I could get away with it I would do it I, I'm gonna get away with this shit what do you want you to do pull the plug he, or? he was like anything uh, there was there was no real plug to pull but okay. pills or right uh, but uh, the, again me and my mother have no real proof of this but I think one of his nutty friends he grew up with in Newark got in there the night before he was going to a hospital for like a three week stay for his bad bed sore he had and, uh, and and off them and helped them which I would never press charges again the guy's dead now but I, who I think it was but uh, what exactly know. how what was the I mean obviously the accent but what did they, when what what happened that they made you think that it might have been that guy. Uh, well, you know, he, th this guy was crazy and he was visiting him more often than not. And, uh, you know, well, later on, a couple of years later, uh, another friend of his said that, uh, this guy had had lunch with him and said, look, you know, Artie asked me to kill him and I think I'm going to do it. Oh, wow. You know, like, and, uh, which was kind of, you know, nutty. And my father's name was Artie too. Yeah. So he, he said, uh, you know, he, and I feel bad for him. He just can't deal with it. And this guy was about to go to jail for armed robbery and he got a, he had uh, Parkinson's disease and stuff like that and he uh he wasn't gonna last that long anyway i think he figured maybe I'll, it's a good thing i'll help him get out of this living hell and my father was always an atheist my my mother would try to like ram religion down our throats right. and my father i'd go to work with him and he'd go there's nothing up there <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing, don't listen to it there's nothing up there did he die like that too or did he, did he convert or, or believe in god at, at, towards the end as he I get closer think, or well, no? there was a monsignor used to visit him all the time and my mother set up and a guy would come over and uh my father would say at least tell me this at least tell me i'm going through the hell on earth right now <laughs> if right. there is a heaven and i don't want more of this shit right when i get over there at least if, if if there's a heaven and a hell, at least tell me he's punishing me here. Right. And then, uh, you know, when I get up there, I could uh, get a pass. Because, um, uh, you know, my father was a, he was a, a sort of a low-level criminal his whole life. He was a, I mean, I loved him. He was a great dad. But you find that more and more shit. The latter, you know, when you become a quadriplegic, there's someone to sue usually. and uh, so, But we had to go on welfare because on top of him falling, there was no one to sue. We were going to sue the ladder company. He fell off a house, had no homeowner's insurance. So th these lawyers you know, swirl around because they smell money. And if it goes to court, a jury doesn't even care about the circumstances. They just see a quadriplegic. Right. Like, the, someone's going to pay. You know, It's a home run. Usually. Right, exactly. So yeah. he goes, well, we'll sue the ladder company. That's what the lawyer said. So uh, my father... Uh, 
like shook his head. I'm like, what's the matter? He stole a ladder. He stole the fucking ladder from a Bell Atlantic truck. <laughs> took it right off the fucking hood of a truck. He stole it. And 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 the the, the, the lawyer the lawyer said, excuse me, Mr. Lang. He goes, I stole the ladder. Uh, he goes, well, we can't sue a company you stole a ladder from. And he goes, uh, so I, I never forget the lawyer did that. The lawyer closed his briefcase, put the legal pen, and said, I wish you all the best of luck. <laughs> <laughs> the smell of money was gone. Yeah. And he said, you stole the ladder? He quietly <laughs> closed his wow. notebook, put his pen back, and said, I wish you guys the best of luck. Oh <laughs> and then it was a living hell for four and a half years. Because you know? he saw my mother. So we go on Medicaid and welfare. I became, you know, my drinking and dope and uh, my gambling, just every self-destructive thing went through the roof. My sister was like an angel, just, uh, you know, worked her way through it. She was still in high school. But, uh, you know, my mother had to get a job as a secretary, come home and take care of him because Medicaid only paid for eight hours. And it was welfare. It was really a, a, a living nightmare. And it's humiliating for a guy who's, you know, again, he's, you know, a man's man or whatever to have to be sure. cleaned and washed by, you know, that's, that's a fucking... The worst. And some of these nurses, uh, you know, some of them are assholes. Uh, yeah. They should not be in the profession they're I in. hear it over and over again. Uh, yeah. And I say, I would say, listen, I understand. I would not want to do this either. So why are you doing it? Right. But then it makes you appreciate the great ones. Mm -hmm. Like he had a couple of uh, male nurses. I hear these two gay black guys. They're, they were angels. They were like, they would make them laugh. Uh, and my father, you know... <laughs> The guy from Newark was not exactly, from, grew up in the 50s, sympathetic towards the plight of the gays, my father. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, these two guys, these two guys w would come in and make him laugh, and, uh, like, he was, like, uh, you know, wiping his ass. They would make him laugh. So th those two guys were really, like, godsends for seven bucks an hour. Wow. It's got to be a calling. Yeah. It's got to be a calling, you know. Did you see uh, Whose Life Is It Anyway? Uh, with Dreyfus, yeah, long time ago, but yeah, where he plays a, a guy who's he's a, a they shoot horses, don't they? Is a similar one, yeah. That, but, that, that, yeah, where he's yeah. injured, he becomes a quadriplegic through a right. car accident, and he can't use his hands anymore. And he was a sculptor, and he's in this li this hell on earth, and he fights in court for his right to die. He just wants to be taken off of feeding. Right. And was that not an option for your father to be? He didn't have the feeding tube. It wasn't, but but he couldn't move from the neck down. He didn't. So he had all his facts. So he could chew and, and swallow. And yeah, you had to feed him and stuff like that. But uh, you know, it's funny when we worked together. He loved apples. It's amazing how the mind works. He loved eating apples when we would take a break. Work. And when he was depressed and I was taking care of him when he was a quad, I said to him, Dad, you want an apple? You love apples. Maybe I'll cheer you up. And he goes, you know what? I can't eat them anymore. And I said, why? He said, I said, I'll feed it to you. He goes, I love the act of holding an apple. Really? And eating it. Like, just the act, like, you grab right. it. And, uh, uh, it seems like an American thing to do. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. Uh, also, reading the newspaper. He didn't like it to be read to him. He liked, you know, opening up, cracking the paper and, yeah. and yeah, turning the, the page. the feel of it. The right. ritual and of it. And he couldn't grip it. Right. And uh, he used to hurt my my uh, hand throwing uh, baseballs at me playing catch real strong guy and I used to pull ups off his biceps I'll never forget that as a kid and then you're right you, you hit the nail on the head for a guy like that to go through it and for his kid to be fucking taking care of him you know that's that's, you that's gotta, hard you gotta hate that as a father yeah that's hard I'm, I'm all for assisted suicide a lot of well I'm, listen in that case a lot of people would, uh, if you saw, if you hung with him for a couple of weeks, you'd probably change your mind. If you weren't, a f we weren't right. for us. Right. Right. Yeah. The worst thing is too, you know, like like the the torture of little things. Like if you have an itch, like a dumb thing like yeah, that, if your yeah, face yeah. itches or uh, just not being able to scratch your fucking face. Couldn't feel anything from the neck down, and the only thing you could feel was pain. You're right, or an itch or something. Like that. Do you, you think you get relief when you're sleeping and dreaming and all that? Uh, well, that's why. That's the thing. He was becoming a pillhead, obviously, and I was like. T -t -t Get, shoot him up with the law to give him whatever the fuck he wants. You know, I, I wasn't denying him anything. I said to the doctors, you know, they gave him a bunch of pills and uh, to help him go to sleep, and he was starting to become addicted to that too. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, well, that's the one time I get relief. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm full of fucking sleep. I don't have to think about all the bullshit. It's a whole different world when you're sleeping. A lot, I know a lot of comedians are humorous, whatever. You know, you go through shit like that. A lot of people have crazy stories. You know? I wonder what you dream. I wonder that, that the worst part has got to be though that you dream that you're walking and active and then wake up. Yeah, do you see the the, the Stephen Hawking movie? We were just yeah, talking yeah, about it yesterday. Uh, the, the, that part at the end where he imagines himself yes. getting up and picking up the pen. That movie really affected me. You know, yeah. uh, mostly because I saw my father in a 
wheelchair for that long, but it, when, when he when he sees the, when he sees, I would just love to pick up that fucking pen. Right. That's all. It was an I amazing mean, scene. I'm sitting here lecturing. Everybody thinks I'm a genius. Yeah. All I want to do is pick, pick up, up that, that fucking pen, pen. And, give it to, and give it to this broad in the front row. I think he's gonna win the Oscar. Uh, he already I don't won see the, how you can't give it to that. He already guy. won the Golden Globe. Yeah. I haven't seen all the other uh, movies yet, but that uh, is a commercial for. You know, yeah. I can't. I mean, the the, the the stuff he does. Like I know the, the stupid acting work I've had. It's hard to prepare to play like you know someone was like me to prepare the, the mornings where he had to do, shoot those scenes in the wheelchair. I can't imagine how he had to prepare for he that. Pulled it off, and he did. That and if you look at Stephen Hawking, it's exactly like him. It was creepy how how much he looked like him. Yeah, uh, his mannerisms and stuff. When he was walking and fell for the first time, that right. scene is amazing. You got to give it to him. You got to give him the Oscar. I mean, I know everybody's talking Keaton, and he was good Bird, too. Man. Yeah, I, I haven't see seen that. It was yet. good, man. It was better than I thought. I thought it was gonna be an overhyped, and but I was like, fuck, I really am enjoying this. I'm gonna check it out. I got two copies if you need one. Really? <laughs> right in my coat. <laughs> I got right the, in my coat. I'll, I'll give you one. I might take you up on it. Uh, we were talking about Stephen Hawking and how amazing. It was that he was able to have an affair no, that, in that position. Having more kids than Cromartie on the Jets. And he, <laughs> and he had a lot of kids. Jesus and, Christ! Yeah. So we were. I, I was saying he must have had a big piece. He must <laughs> well, have had a big it piece. Makes sense. It makes sense because yeah, she had to like negotiate getting on top, and he also had millions of dollars though. That <laughs> that also doesn't help. The fact that he was a, he's not a broke physicist. He had a Corvette. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was a fucking. He was quite a rich guy. It was, it was a good movie. I wish they uh, focused a little more on his life, but it was the love. Story told from her perspective. You, she the ex-wife. Like a, she looked like an angel in that man. No kidding. It was like a publicity stunt for her. her she life. made sure the person that played her was a like basically a, a model <laughs> and hot. <laughs> that always happens. And the, and the guy she ends up with in the movie, he's like a model. Yeah. And then he uh, he makes sure the bra that Stephen Hawking cheated on looked a little yeah. crazy. Look, it's and always nuts. it's always yeah. She was a. F That's what my point about Goodfellas. Goodfellas is told from Henry Hill's perspective, and right. he never. Kills a guy. He's always like voice of reason. Like, what are you doing, Jimmy? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course. We can't kill this guy, Jimmy. Right. Come on. <laughs> it's all about perspective. Right. I said yesterday, and these guys gave me shit. The scene where she finds the penthouse in that movie. Yeah. And he can't move, and he wants to look at the penthouse, and right. she she's slowly turning the pages and seducing him. I right. thought it was a hot scene. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I found that to be kind of a kind of a turn on. Thing is, are very erotic, very uh, erotic. Did anybody ever lose patience with your dad? Like, cause I know the, the, there's rumors that uh, oh, we all did. I, times, I, mean, I was right? guilty of it, sure. Yeah. Well, you snap and then you're like, oh, "Fuck, what am I doing?" Yeah. What am I? I'm yelling at a guy who can't move. Were you guys but, relieved when he passed? I, you know, I hate to say it, but for him and us, and I, my mother was just tired. She was always uh, tired and you know uh, not able to sleep. She would set her alarm for every two hours to wake up and turn him. Otherwise, you get a, a bed and then get up and, and work all day. Uh, again, oh my God! Day find, in and day out, that was her routine. Yeah, you don't wow. find women like that anymore, man. A modern woman bolts. Yeah, I, you know, I've had girlfriends leave me because I have a the flu. They don't want to put, <laughs> they don't want to put up with those four days of hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my brother, uh, we we had an open um, discussion about it, uh, my dad after he passed. Like right. the guilt went away, and we felt guilty about that because my dad's his same health, way. I his was health same was way. really shitty, and when that phone rang in the middle of the night, that's why I don't even keep my phone on anymore. I think it goes back to that. Yeah, we're just we're like, oh, here it is. It, it finally happened, and right. then and then when he did pass, and we went through it. And it was horrible. We were all extremely sad. Obviously, then we went into a stage of relief where yeah. we did, we weren't going to get that phone call anymore. That's normal, I think. Or you think? Normal. Yeah, I think absolutely. But we openly talked about it. And it felt good to talk and, and go. Oh, you were thinking that too. Then. Yeah. Now we don't have to worry about that anymore. If you like, I said I've done a lot of group therapy, and you find a lot of people are, are like that. It's a uh, it's a uh, it's a hard thing. You know, living in L.A., you talk about that phone call. Living in L.A. with the time difference, a lot of times my mother would forget the time. You know, and I'd be getting this call. I'm like, man, you realize it's you know, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you realize I think I think everyone died in the family because you don't it's realize four in the it's, morning. Yeah, right. it's, it's seven for <laughs> oh, you. Oh, I'm Mark. sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's still around. Yeah, oh, yeah. Believe me, alive and kicking, doing good. Yeah, oh, that's good. You're doing real well. Yeah, good to hear, man. Yeah. Wow, that's uh, some heavy stuff. With... Yeah, it's interesting. Though. I really hadn't realized that. I'm like, how do I know you this long and not know? So some... I guess every friend you have, there's a million things in their life you that's don't something know. You bring up, you know, it's like one of those. It's it's kind of heavy. I put it in my first book, but I, you know, uh, I uh, yeah, a lot of comics, um, I think, do have you know abnormal. Maybe not really traumatic, but something crazy in their past that makes you want to...
you know, get on stage and forget about it. So yeah, yeah I don't really trust most comedians who have a a, a, a wonderful story. I'm like, there's <laughs> something missing. There's yeah. not many that are successful though. Not yeah. that I know. Well, Seinfeld's probably the example. He's yeah, the one, but he's, I mean, he's the one guy who's like, you know, yeah, he does seem nuts, but uh, yeah, but he just came he out and thought he, thought he might be autistic. He, right. he goes, I'm the, I'm on the spectrum. Then he goes, No, I'm not. He, he's got some kind of nut, nut he, issues too. He held it together for a long time, but that comedians in cars, which I love the right. web series he does, uh, you realize, okay, he's he's nuts as well. All right. <laughs> Right, good. Yeah. Okay, it makes sense now. Yeah. He's is just he not to a different that? one. Yeah. I love it. I he should that. have you. No, well, you would be a great one. I don't know. I guess. I'm doing comedians in cars getting cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> That's my spinoff. Uh, Are you liking doing a podcast? Oh, God, I love it. Oh, you do? Man. Yeah, yeah. I, I forgot how much I love radio, you know, and this is really... You're about a month or two in now, right? Yeah, three weeks in. We three just weeks. finished okay. our for our three our third full week. Yeah, it's it's just a blast, and it really is. I mean, I don't even have sponsors at this point. It's just like a, a pay a, a monthly thing because I, you know, these these corporations Google my name and they're like, I know uh, we're not sponsoring well, this, but just, I, I uh, oh, right. a few thousand people have signed up already, and. Um, uh, it's just that they're my only bosses. Yeah, right? it's great. It's like I mean, even here is working here is great, but you're still working for a corporation. Someone else. There's you, none of that. You There's, didn't. Have, you didn't have to worry about bosses when you were here, really, because uh, Howard well, Howard was in yeah in, in know, his own, but, own but, world. But I wasn't there. Howard though. You know, it's, it's still you want to deal with management. <laughs> No, not on that level, but you know, there's, there was, you know, uh, I, I was still nervous about stuff I said. You know, you never know if if I say something that could embarrass the show, maybe he'll talk to him about me, and uh, he'll be forced to deal with it. Right, right. Uh, but uh, you know, I was always nervous about that. It never happened, but I still had that In the neurosis. Back of your head. Yeah, gotcha. here, you know, there's none of that. You know, Arnie my Quinn typical stand up, by the way, my typical stand up is afraid of getting fired all the time. Oh, no matter what constantly. you're doing, no matter how good it is, you're obsessed with. They're gonna get rid of because it because you guys. You guys live in a world where you don't have to worry about any of that, and then right. and then you're doing a little, not a little, you're doing radio, which is a big deal and a big yeah. job, and, yeah. it, and it's totally different. So something that you said on stage the night before could actually get you fired uh, from your radio show. Right. That's an excellent point. Everything I did being on a show that that many people were listening to, literally millions of people around the North America, uh, you know, everything you did, the pressure got amplified. Like if you did a, I, I was a regular on Conan before I got on Howard. And those, you know, I do the appearance, everything be fine. And then now you do the appearance, and there might be fifty phone callers who liked you or hated you, or right. you said something on stage in Vegas the night before, and you get shit for that. It, everything was scrutinized mm -hmm. uh, to the umpteenth degree, you know. So you're right; the pressure is is more, but uh, still, I. I love the job. It was amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, it's artiequitter.com for the podcast. You can yeah, sign up right now as, as we talk to Artie. One word, artiequitter.com. Yeah. Where do you uh, do it from? I'm doing it from my house right now in Hoboken. It just, so you just use kind of like a mic and a recorder set up? Are you going to build a mini I studio? Up, I, I, it's a mini studio. Oh, it is? There. Yeah. Oh, okay. nice. I set it up to where, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, both of you guys or anybody's going to open yeah. invite to come in and say hi, but it's... Uh, it's like a mini studio. I, I, I invested in everything myself. That's nice. great. It's smart. I hired a marketing guy. I, I paid for the website myself, and the, I have a full board, uh, you know, uh, oh, okay. and, uh, and a, uh, an engineer and a producer. You know, you're, so uh, you're taking it very serious. Yeah, why not? It's like, uh, and I get to you know plug the stand up. Speaking of houses, uh, you, you hit the press two or three days ago. You're selling your uh, your well, bay it's, house. It's, it's like you know, it's seven thousand square feet. Is that real? Yeah. Because yeah. me and Jimmy were freaking out. We're like, he has a seven thousand square foot house. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, it was a good investment. Uh, I, I I bought it about seven eight years ago on the Jersey Shore. It's my Jersey Shore dream house. Um, but you know, it's it's a situation where like. If I can get the right price for it, I'll sell it. But if not, I'm, I won't. You know, just keep just it. Keep you don't have to it. sell. But uh, I, there's actually a place I'd like to get um, in another area that I have my eye on. It's funny. I always want more. But I, yep. I, uh, if I can get the price I want for this house, then I could make that other move. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah, I, th that's a sanctuary for me down there. The I pictures are beautiful. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's really great. Really nice. So you're not broke or anything like that. You're okay. Uh, no, you. I'm you're not. Like, Thank good. God. Good. Good. No, good. I mean, a lot of people would think that. I mean, uh, listen, I've, I've spent a lot of money on bad shit, but... Uh, Whenever you hear the house goes on sale, you're like, oh, no. Oh, no. But that's just a movie. Maker. No, it's, 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 not, it's not like that. Okay, no, good. No. Uh, it's... Uh, 
it's the, one of the things if I get a certain price for it, I'll take it. You know. Have you been careful? Like you know, you hear so many people get ripped off. I've been so paranoid about that. Like I'm pretty careful with money. Like it's never happened to me. I mean, but I'm not saying it's because I'm so bright. I just have people that didn't rip been me lucky. off. Right. That, that yeah. means you've been lucky. That's what I mean. The people could. I mean, people talk about uh, you know, these guys who get ripped off are stupid. Not really. They just, you know, I I got a lot of references before the I gave people my money to deal with, and uh, if they're going to be criminals, I have no control over that. Well, the Billy Joel story. Oh, that proves that you, we're all just lucky. Got to keep writing hits, man. He, he thought after glass houses he could he, relax yeah. for a little while. The story goes, I think it was his brother-in-law right. was well, the one that took. Every fucking dollar. The Dane yeah. Cook story too, right? With his, his brother. brother, yeah, his brother, Millions. half brother, half brother, whatever yeah. it was, was uh, hiding money all over the country. That's when you supposedly wanna... burying money. You want to strangle found, somebody? They yeah. found money in his freezer. I mean, because I I, 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 I hung with that guy. Uh, Dane Cook actually invited me to his SNL uh, when he was hosting. Oh yeah, and and at the after party, the big famous after party, I was sitting right next to the guy. He seemed, he he's seemed always pretty... been he's always been nice to me. Did no. you get have a good relationship with Dane? I never had a problem with him. Yeah, and I, I I've always. Comes on, I, yeah, we like him, we support him. But I, I sat cool. next to his brother, and I didn't. And I'm like, I think back now, like, wow, that guy was already burying money. A yeah. complete, a complete, just fuck you, man. Like, what a really? scumbag move. Yeah, I took mean, him for millions. Still in the joint, I think, right? He's I think so. Down. And they, they didn't find all the money. They, they were able to recover some of it. Nah, it's gone. These guys spend it. You know, they or they get rid of it. Or they it's hide it. Brother, and, though, Jesus. Uh, well, you know, I mean, because I, I bought that house because of stand up on the road. I mean, you know, that, that's uh, the the Stern salary was great. Great, but you know because of the stand-up I was able to do because of it, and you know uh, the, the the book deals and shit and whatever, I, uh, I I was able to buy it because I was making a lot of money on the road and I saved it, and that's blood money, man. That that's that's a lot of work. So if someone steals your stand-up money, I mean you know it's like that's getting you know especially when you're trying to keep a radio gig on top of it. Yeah. Uh, and for me, doing morning radio while I was doing the road, it's like going from having a paper route to being nocturnal. I'd leave St. Louis, get there, have to be up, uh, you know, 5 a.m. Monday morning. That is so much work. If someone stole that money, I'd be homicidal. Yeah. I'd, be homicidal. I'd be like, you know, the, motherfucker. The hardest part of the job yeah. is getting up early. Yeah, you know, and for after being up all night doing stand-up oh. and then traveling. Jesus. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm no great businessman. I just saved my fucking money. I just made enough money to wear, you know, a retail. Hard, could, could <laughs> right. you know, what I was like that, or and I had and a, did. <laughs> what do I have? Let's <laughs> <laughs> be real specific. A fat, disgusting retard. <laughs> could have, but uh, you know, and I, and I said to myself, uh, you know, it's a good real estate investment, and I bought the place in Hoboken. Uh, you know, again, and, and, and the idiot that I am, I was able to to get a good sort of net worth going. But if someone steals that money that you got from stand-up it's not like some development deal where you didn't have to work for it and it's it's, yeah. it's blood yeah. money man. Right. Yeah, you're, you're and you do feel good when you it. have a place that you bought to look at like all right this was i, I did something and here's right. the yeah. evidence of it look what i did <laughs> and it's, i didn't just fucking waste every dollar and and you know cause i have the, you know mild demons myself and uh, you know it's kind of hard not to blow even more money on plus me. when you look like me you need that for broads that place is a closer <laughs> <laughs> your chick walks in there and instantly i'm rob low <laughs> Good. I look like Marcus Schenkenberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is amazing what a good fucking picture window view can do. <laughs> Absolutely. I've seen it, man. Beautiful. It's a panty dropper. Yeah. Um, I forgot that you were an elf. My kid is at yeah. that age where uh, well, they're watching about, that movie a lot, and I'm like, holy fuck, that's right. Artie was uh, Santa Claus. Just goddamn Matt. Talk about money. God bless that. That's like a Christmas bonus every year, the residuals. because They have fucking marathons. Right. There's so, marathons of that fucking movie. So you get a good taste from that movie. I get residuals. Wow, you know, nice. I mean, it's good a, for you. It's a goddamn Christmas classic. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, you got, a, you got a couple big scenes, too. Yeah, I, I, well, it's, Did uh, you realize that movie was, well... I guess because it was Will Farrell and when he was beyond I knew it'd be hot. a hit, but like the the level of it, like they call it a Christmas classic. I mean, it's because of his performance. He's he's really. But I saw him. Uh, we shot it up in Vancouver in Canada, and uh, I'm in the Santa suit. He was in that fucking elf suit from six in the morning to like seven at night, and I I would I would have lost and killed someone with a machete. <laughs> right. He had that hat. Staple to his <laughs> fucking head, and he had those those shoes, and he stayed in character. I saw him before breakfast. I, I was putting the Santa suit on my trailer, and I had the door open, talking like the the, the, the assistant director. She'd give me like the itinerary, and he walks by in that suit. He goes, "Hi, Artie." 
baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, I blew a bunch of takes because I was laughing at everything he did. But uh, he had to be, he was in that character, in that outfit the whole fucking did he, time. Did he feel like he had to be in character for that role? I don't know. Oh, that's Man, so I, funny. The hardest role for me would be to play a cheery guy. I'd right. have to, if I have to be a cheery guy yeah. all the time, right. I'd have to, I'd need help. Uh, Eric just told me that uh, USA does a 24 hour marathon of Elf. They do. So that's, that's got to be nice money. Yeah, I think right. Stars picked it up this uh, season too. Was doing a twenty four hour marathon, so, and that's a, that's a, it's a Christmas uh, classic well, now. So that movie will never go away. That's the other. I've I've been lucky enough to be in like about ten films, and the, the residuals for that that's free money. Like that money, you don't mind people stealing, <laughs> but uh, wow. it's not like stand up money. Uh, so uh, that's you, great. Because even if a movie sucks, and I've been in shitty movies, and I've been shitty in them, <laughs> uh, but but there's, they just throw them on in the back. A studio will sell a movie to a dentist office. It's on in the background mm -hmm. for like just noise, right? And you get money for that. God bless it. I've never gotten good residual money. I've gotten like uh, little bits and in, in pieces here and, and there. You're the first Spider Man, right? Yeah, but it was a one, you know, this I, is a quick thing. I got a thousand bucks for one line, which was okay. That was my pay. I probably made five or six thousand over the years in residual. Right. You know, nothing. Mm. I wonder. You wonder what the main actors like the amount of money that Tobey Maguire or well, fucking Kirsten Dunst are, must pull in. A lot of those are buyouts. They'll go to the union oh. and say you, they get you know fifteen million, and then they don't get. And that's it. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I would have taken that. I, uh, I get the type of checks. It's it's fun though, but it's like a dollar twenty one is my right. residual Let's check for uh, you know being on Louie or something. Yeah, right. It's so funny. Uh, and yeah. then you see why because they played in some weird country at least yeah. in Malaysia Malaysia so yeah, I, get Malaysian a, I get another dollar 21 it's it's always a dollar 21 <laughs> I have a to my, my lowest one and I framed it 12 cents 12 cents I have a 12 cent for a Conan episode that they aired in Nebraska <laughs> and I'm like at 3 a.m. I'm like where is Conan just airing in just Nebraska at 3 but it was morning. an episode of Conan and it was yeah about 10 years ago I have a frame 12 cents 12 cents I, I have a I bought on eBay a Richard Pryor uncashed check that he got from uh, the spelling company for the Mod Squad. It was a five dollar <laughs> check, and they sold that. I guess Pryor said, "Fuck that." Right. Well, maybe he just he was so oh. fucked up he didn't have no idea. He probably had uncashed checks all over the yeah. apartment. Oh, we're uh, we're gonna go uh, to Mike Calta or uh, Cowhead. I, 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 it's yeah, hard. Mike. We need to break uh, and then do. We Mike's. should break so we could do that because uh, I think they're expecting us right at nine. They got to time yeah. it on their end. We don't really have to time it. But uh, Jim Norton, Nardi, and uh, Bobby, Bobby, Kelly. Bobby Kelly are doing uh, a gig fun. in Tampa, for, March twentieth, for, for Mike and today. They, this is why this is why promoters are dumb. Tickets are on say to, to the, to, on sale today at noon. Why wouldn't they go on sale earlier while we're on the air? <laughs> why, why are they obsessed with noon? I don't know. It's all computerized. Right, exactly. But it has, has to be. My call is great, and uh, it's in St. Petersburg, Florida, March 20th, 8 o'clock. This show will sell out at the Mahaffey Theater. I, I've I, played there before. You ever played the Mahaffey? I don't think so. I've no. played it's, it's yeah. a great place. Great place. Sam just handed me something. I don't know if Artie's on board. We love making fun of radio shows. Sure. I think you've probably heard that over the years. I know, sure. Yeah. Especially the like the 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 morning zoo types. Yeah. And uh you, this is real. Todd and Jade, who we've been beating up a little bit lately, they have a song called All About the Balls. <laughs> Oh, well, because of, uh, of New England? Because of the Patriots? <laughs> Look at Jimmy's face. It, it actually just makes me sad. <laughs> oh, God. Boy, that has opened up every bad pun, the New York yeah, Post. Dude, it's yeah. unbelievable. It's almost awe-inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> they're trying. They're, well, they're, the Post is in your face with it, but the, oh, yeah, about I, the ball. The, po the Post oh. and their Sheldon Silver, uh, you know, did you know? That's just inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's great. More with Artie Lang. Stay there. Call that the no. Yeah. Artie Lang in studio again. A lot of people uh, are thinking that Artie's on our show for the first time. No, he's already <laughs> did our show. He killed it. Yeah, about a month or two ago. Is this? Am I, are we on the air? Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I'm, I'm trying to like. Yes. You, you need to adjust the the volume over there. Okay. Uh, there you go. Now there's there's the stuff I need. I think you lost a little weight. Is that? I probably it, dropped a couple. Yeah. Is that okay to say to another guy? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right, <laughs> all right. It's okay to say to this guy. Yeah. You're looking good. I'm fine with it. Thanks, man. All uh, right. You know, just... What are you doing to lose the weight? Uh, you know, I I I got diabetes, and uh, 
I had type two for a while. That turned into type one, which is uh, worse because one, one, because that's when you need the needle. They actually have these pen needles now. Yeah, where it's the easiest thing in the world. Like a retarded kid could use it. You, you, you just stick yourself. You put the amount of units you want uh, on the dial on the pen, and you, you put it in. It takes like ten seconds. Do you get a hit of pain or no? No, no. That's what makes it easier. Just a quick skim pop. If I had to do that, I don't think I could ever. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, there's, I can't believe these heroin addicts on the street can hit veins. You know, you go, you go uh, in, into a hospital and like 14 nurses sometimes can't find the vein. Right. These guys tie off on the corner of 38th and 9th <laughs> yeah, right. and uh, they hit a vein, you know, I mean, they could be doctors or something. Uh and what, you have to eat this diabetic diet, which is basically a diet everyone should eat. It's no carbs. It's no white flour, stuff like that. And uh, because I've been eating a diabetic diet, I probably dropped some weight. And I started walking a little bit. You know? So does the needle hurt every day? No. They, they used to, like, though, It's a real small needle. My old man had it. My old man had it. And he was in real good shape, my father. And he, he climbed roofs for a living. Uh, so he always, uh, you know, but he, he had a bad, just hereditary, I guess. But that was back when you had to draw... It out of the vial like a syringe, Holy and fuck. that hurt. It of was, course, yeah. uh, but I didn't get it till a couple of years ago. And the technology is such now where it. And when I, you know, we're on the road so much. That's what I worried about in yeah. the hospital because I forget to take fucking shirts on the road. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? Uh, you know how many shirts I, I have? Like a, you know, a Hawthorne Inn or Ramada Inn T shirt I buy in the gift shop because I'm out of clothes. Uh, but it's just like taking another pen uh, in your in your briefcase on the road. So that's probably why I dropped it. Does, does your uh, blood uh, sugar drop? Uh, get, well, getting you in some situations. Yeah, it. Uh, I like. I mean, my problem is it being higher, so I like when it drops. But uh, oh, okay. I uh, if I exercise, it's still reversible, which is great. So if I can lose another fifty pounds, oh, so you could go back to having the the, the one. Well, just on pills. Two, two, yeah, just on pills. Yeah, right. Okay. Which is. Much but how do you go from? Uh, wait, now I'm confused. Which is the worst one? One is one. Okay, so how do you go? They from, call it type A or type one. How do you go from two to one? Uh, Just bad diet? Yeah, that's what I, you know what I did? I thought it was going to be way worse when I went in originally. And of course, they tell me it's not as bad. And I take that as a, you know, okay, now I can still keep having fun. Fuck it. I'm not as bad as I thought I was. And, you know, on the road, I, I eat. Like, what do you eat for dinner on the road at a hotel? I, Always I, I, grilled chicken <laughs> uh, with steamed vegetables. I have, well, Kenny will find a place. For <laughs> He got arrested for that. What's his uh, What's his name? I know Courtney uh, Love's not a big fan of him. Wes something. Because he he sounded a little too much like Kurt, especially in the beginning. Uh. And what do they get him for? Being an asshole. Well, yeah, he went on the carousel, and then it goes in back into that restricted area. <laughs> oh, he went. Oh, he went all in. He, he rode the whole thing around. Oh my god, and that then, is. And then that they had, is going for it. So what, he set off a bunch of alarms, <laughs> and then they had to just drag him off the carousel. <laughs> that okay. You get huddle of mud guy. I, I, I don't know. West Scanlon. No, me neither. All right, good. All right, Artie. Who would? <laughs> I thought he just went for the easy loop, but he went. Wow, he went. He went behind the scenes. <laughs> was he uh, partaking in substances or something? Uh, the, the article didn't say that, but yeah. they just list a lot of the things that he was arrested for in the past. You have to make your own assumptions. If you ride the luggage carousel at the airport, you're not at, at the age of forty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I go exactly. behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> can't be sober. Restricted area. <laughs> Look, it's fine out here, but right. don't go in that restricted area. He went under the yeah, the that flap, thing. the flap, the thing. flap. Thing. I don't even know what you. It's because Kenny eats pretty healthy too. He doesn't yeah. really eat a burger, but he eats ridiculously. See, you got to go out and get you got to find it. Yeah, but you the problem is, it. you you have all the intention of uh, eating well, and then you open up that menu in your hotel room, right. and it's just staring at you. Well, God forbid you're at a nicer hotel and they have everything. Like I just uh, I played Boston and I recently. And I said, let me splurge a little bit. And I stayed at the Ritz Carlton. And, then, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can get a steak and yeah. <laughs> pretty full menu. Yeah, yeah it's hard. Yeah. But you, get, you know, you get just, just salad with you know, dressing on the side, grilled chicken. You get used to it after a while. Like, yeah. I'd what rather eat shit, but I feel better when I eat that. What about the mini bar? <laughs> well, that's, I, that's my problem. I what rush out and have a $19 Toblerone bar. With a fucking rule. With a root beer. <laughs> that's my dinner. And that's how I'm on stage like that. You know, my blood sugar is 600. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, but yeah, that's the other thing. It's expensive. At the, yeah, that's uh, it. the mini bar is you open the door, you're down 50 bucks. Right. It's, it's crazy. And now you can't even move those things around because, uh, you know, no, sensors. I, that's right. And they have all sorts of. 